how do you feel about cats? Some folks absolutely love their independent and inquisitive nature. The way they seem to have an air of a sovereign ruling over their kingdom, their softness, and that purr when they are satisfied. Others, well, they find that a cat is never satisfied. They always take things a bit too far, and that kingdom the cat thinks they rule over, that's your house. <laughs> Many just don't trust them or like them, not even a little. Cats have a strong presence in human society and in our history. The cat held a sacred place with the pharaohs in Egyptian history. The pagans also looked on the cat with great respect. And loved them or not, they have been around for a long time. And they don't appear to be going anywhere anytime soon. But there was a time in history when that balance between humans and felines was destabilized. And it didn't go well for the humans. Balance is disturbed. Here's one interpretation of those events. Beginning in the early 1200s, the cat found itself on the wrong side of the Pope. And back then, the Popes were not always gentle, pious, and kind, like we have gotten used to them being in our time. Pope Gregory IX, as some versions of history tell it, had a real problem with felines, most especially black ones. The Pope published an edict declaring that cats are bad, so bad that they carried the spirit of the devil with them and they could not be trusted. Somehow this declaration from the Pope became the impetus for an all-out war by humans on cats. There was a concerted effort by the faithful from 1233 through 1234 AD to exterminate cats from the face of the earth. Why such an extreme stance on cats? Well, to understand the mindset, we need to go back into the murky waters of medieval history a little bit further. In the late 1100s, the common folk, and some of the educated ones, started getting some crazy ideas. Ideas like anyone could send a prayer up to their God on their own, without need for a priest. And some folks even got more off track than that. Some folks actually thought they should be able to read the Bible on their own and not just be told the official and approved version of what it said by the church. As time passed, the people began to follow their own paths and were beginning to express their faith in a way not prescribed by the church. And that caused the church to have less influence to be less needed, to be less necessary, and even redundant. Not to mention how the profits from Sunday's passing the plate precipitously dropped. Uh, <clears throat> well, it was with the welfare of the flock, first and foremost on their hearts, it was decided that these heresies had to be identified, rooted out, and stomped into submission whenever they are found. So an investigation, or an inquisition began. Under the Pope's authority, trusted and wise individuals were authorized to detect and root out the influence of the heretics and return power to the church, I mean, and save the souls of the flock. And anything that was deemed heretical was to be eliminated. The Accusations Fast forward back to the 1200s, heretics were being found, questioned, and forced to confess their sins. And because a few of these tortured, I mean confessing heretics, said that cats had a significant role in the spate of evil, well, the inquisitors reasoned, off with their heads. And many of the folks got pretty committed to the kill the evil cat cause. Problem is, in the real world, when you kill the predator, the natural result is that the prey explodes in population. In this case, the prey 
whose life expectancy and numbers dramatically increased were mice and rats who carry fleas that also carry the plague. And the plague? Well, it killed lots of people very quickly on several occasions. In the mid-1200s, the plague was apparently explained as the anger of the devil at having his pet cats exterminated. <laughs> this plague, it was a curse from the devil. It had nothing to do with the unintended consequences of killing so many felines that the rodent population and corresponding flea population absolutely exploded. So it appears, in an attempt to thwart Satan by killing cats, there was also an unintended outcome of killing a whole lot of people, too. But in defense of those who decided to whack those fuzzy and adorable animals, they had no idea one would inevitably lead to the other. Who would have ever thought the absence of a creature like the cat, with such impeccable balance and grace, might toss the existence of humanity so dangerously out of balance? Most things in life seem to have balance. And when one tips the scale in a different and new direction, some part of that balance is disturbed. And then things happen. Some things might be expected, and some might be a surprise. Like when Tabby swats your grandmother's delicate heirloom vase out of balance and off the entry table and onto the floor, just to see what happens. Balance and chaos. So, here's the ounce. Electric light bulbs took over for candles. Automobiles decreased the need for buggy whips. The computer and word processor destroyed the typewriter industry. And um, now that we have the internet, do people even remember the encyclopedia? Change begets change. Progress creates more change. The unexpected engenders even more surprises and chaos will always appear. So, has there ever been, or will there ever be, true and consistent balance? Perhaps chaos is its own sort of balance. What do you think? And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration.